Hello everyone! <clears throat> we are tonight playing Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Followed by its sequel, Milk Outside a Bag of Milk uh, Outside a Bag of Milk uh, So it, apparently it is a psychological horror uh, little pair of games um, So I'm not entirely sure what we're getting ourselves into here um, But it was well reviewed so, uh, fingers crossed that this is going to, uh, go well. Uh, so let's get started. I do V. I'm pressing V, but it's not doing anything. Do I have to do Shift V? Okay, well, help me buy milk. Okay. Break down your name. Okay, and do you just press enter, I guess? Yep, yeah, alright. Ah, here we go. Now I can change the volume. Yeah, it seems about right. Maybe a little lower. Let me know if the volume needs adjusting. All right. I walk down the road to the store and rehearse my speech. It's been so long since I've been out of the house that I completely forgot what words to say when entering the store. I'm going to the store. <laughs> Shut up and go already, or who are you talking? Who are you talking to? I'm imagining as if I were a character in a game. What if it helps me gather my thoughts? <laughs> what game? Well, you know. There are games where you can see the character's thoughts, right on the screen, you know? So I thought if someone is reading my mind, I need to be very focused so I don't blurt out too much. Haha. <laughs> I take a deep breath of air. Hello, can I... Crap, I forgot. Nineteenth attempt, and I'm failing again. I bite my lip in frustration. So, once again. Hello, can I get... Wow, that's a whole word more. Thank you, I'm trying my best. I think this time the L sound was longer than usual. Do you think that's it? Who knows? Hello, can I... Ugh, I wish I hadn't said anything. Don't worry. Okay. By the way, you've been walking with your left foot on the pavement and your right foot on the grass for a full minute now. What? My right foot is frozen in the air. How much? 50 steps on the pavement and 51 in the grass. You have to undo the previous step. <laughs> How do you imagine that? It's not the first time this has happened. Uh, we're not going to be mean. Uh, maybe we'll do the me a mean playthrough uh, after. Because apparently this is a pretty short one, this first one. You've been taught the right way, haven't you? Come on. I, I don't remember. I'm ready to burst into tears. Uh, here we go again. So, step one. Take a step back to get your foot exactly in your own footprint. Wait a minute, what a me- wait! <laughs> Jeez, what, where is my brain at tonight? Wait a minute, what do you mean step one? What then? But it's already the 52nd. Or wait, I'm going backwards. So then it's the 50th? It doesn't add up. Okay, okay, step 50. Take a step back to get your foot exactly in your own footprint. Could you rephrase it just a little bit? You can't just repeat a phrase without cha changing at least one word. People don't talk like that. You're hopeless. You make it sound like it's my fault. The store closes in an hour, so... You will be very, very guilty if you don't buy the milk. Damn, really? 
Well, are you ready? Hell yes. I carefully move my foot backward, looking carefully into the dense grass. As I enter the store, I turn to the first person I see. Hello, can I... Oh, that doesn't look like a person. Oh. Excuse me? What? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to do something different here. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. You shouldn't have done that. He's obviously not going to change his lines. You run the risk of ending up in an endless loop. Excuse me, what? Oh. Excuse me, what? Oh. Yeah. Excuse me, what? Oh. Oh. What? Oh. What is he trying to tell you? He's trying to scare me. But how does he know that I'm terrified by the letter O? What's so scary about it? I have a frightening image when I picture it in my head. I can show you. Explaining won't be enough, but keep it... Sorry, what? <laughs> we missed the end of that dialogue. But yeah, that, that's a scary -o. Something like that. So I'll just continue to ignore his question. What? Oh. What? Oh. Yeah. I gather all my will into a fist. Oh? Oh! My interlocutor shook and crawled away. Oh, and we got the achievement. Oh! <laughs> you just repeated after him. And it worked. Do it more often. Wait, I said he crawled away. Did he really crawl away? I mean, I didn't even look in his direction. When exactly did you say that? Just now. Personally, I didn't hear it. You're just trying to distract me. But I know that my words were shown on the screen. I'm standing by the shelves. On the rack, there are bags of milk. We both stand. And the milk... lies? Or maybe... Hey, hey, slow down. Do you even remember why you're here? To buy milk. So buy it. Right here? What do you expect me to say? Um, I guess something like, not here. Not here, take the bag and go to cash register, you're getting a Mars. We're, we're being nice for this playthrough, so. Not here, take the bag and go to the cash register. I guess the first sentence. And you, as if out of spite, didn't pause before the second one. You want to rob me of my little victories? Uh, well, you see, we are an individual who clearly has some sort of neuroses, um, who is attempting to buy milk. Um, so she is, uh, the, the character is imagining that this, this scenario is playing out like in a video game. Um, so they're imagining this to help them get through the process of buying milk at the store. I sigh and reach out to take the milk. Or rather, the bag with the milk inside. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag of milk. Or rather, a bag, in a bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag. Or rather, a bag of milk inside a bag of milk inside... Come on, come on. Fifteen minutes before the store closes. Hurry up. I remembered what these games are called, visual novels. And by the way, the numbers are written there in full, with letters. Are visual novels worse than books? But there, uh, but there are, the authors are not lazy, so don't get lazy either. Wait, I thought only your thoughts were visible on the screen. Not anymore, so watch your mouth. Heh <laughs> Ahem. Anyway, you heard me. Hurry up, or you'll get it at home again. I'm on my way. 
Hello, can I get some milk, please? That's a freaky looking individual. You have it. Ah. Give. I put a weighty bag on the register. Of course, not just the bag, but the milk, too. Hi, can I... Can I have it, please? No. Please. No. But please, Mom will throw me out, the, out of the window if I get back without milk. Oh, dear. No. But why not? Give more. But I don't have anything else. Hey. What? Pay for the milk. Haha, <laughs> really? What would I do without you? I take the crumpled bill out of my pocket and hand it to the cashier. He starts to carefully examine it. It took about two days before he nod nodded contentedly and put it in the cash register. Thank you. Goodbye. I walk down a familiar street past a gas station. A bag of milk unpleasantly tugs, tugs at my hand, reminding me of the days when I was in physical therapy. By the way, they gave me a bag at the checkout, so now I'm carrying a bag of milk in another bag. Don't think anything of it, I just love the pyramidal structure of verbal constructions. The gas station is getting closer. How are you feeling? Thank you for your interest. I feel like a mile-long bar of ice cream. What is that supposed to mean? As if I'd tell you. But I'm really interested. Well, look. The ratio of water to milk in the volume of air occupied by me is about 30 to 1. And yeah, ice cream is not the best, unless you want to drink more than to eat. Anyway, the road from the store to the gas station is a stick and the road from the gas station to home is ice cream. Okay. During today's walk, my body has been to every part of this pack. Simple math. I see. I feel movement under my feet. Asphalt grains, petrol stains. I'm trying to keep my balance. And how do people move over something as uneven as the city plane? Gently, heel, toe. I count in my mind every meter of the path I walk. I even close my eyes for more concentration. Hey, watch out. Ah! I unconsciously take a sharp step to the side. At the same moment, a huge bear rushes past me with a wild screech. Hey, I'm walking here. I cast a reproachful glance at the swiftly departing giant. Its red eyes, in turn, look at me with mockery. Did you see that? How brazen. It was a truck. Okay! Oh, really? Although, if you think about it, are there bears with eyes on the back of their heads? You could have died. Come on. Are you saying someone would seriously want to kill an innocent girl carrying a bag of milk? The world is a cruel and dangerous place. I'm not in the world you're talking about. My journey continues. If you think about it, the road from the store has one interesting property. It adjusts to me in the most bizarre ways. When I'm in a hurry, all the traffic lights turn off helpfully. When I feel like crying, a cloud appears over me and pours rain streams that hide my tears. Right now, I can feel a cloud slowly gathering over the top of my head. I'm sad. Are you sure this is really happening? What else could it be? Has it ever occurred to you that it's all just in your head? That's not what the manual said at all. Apparently, these pills don't work for me either. Pills have nothing to do with it. Please, I just want to get home and go to bed. I really, really am very grateful to you, but please, no more. You have to accept the truth. No. 
have to accept the truth. No. You have to accept the truth. No. No. Looks like Aranis doesn't help me at all. Uh, we got the not this time achievement. I guess I'll try something else next time. Okay. So I guess we're not supposed to say that. Again? I hope we can do it this time. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. Go to the store. What happens if I say mean things this time? Shut up and go already. Hey, aren't you supposed to help me? I take a deep breath of air. Hello, can I... Crap, I forgot. 19th attempt and I failed again. Okay, hello, can I get... Well, there's a whole word more. Ha ha ha, loser! Don't insult me, please. Uh, yes, you've been walking with your foot on the pavement, foot on the grass. Yeah, you, ha ha. You're so stupid. Okay, so that just takes me right to, uh, the bad end. Alright. All right, we're gonna try uh, to get the good end this time. Who are you talking to? Start game. Don't worry. Not the right way. We're just gonna skip through uh, all this. Yeah, the guy who likes O's. So scary about it. Yeah, the horrible uh, void of darkness. Yeah, get rid of the O guy. Buying the milk. Uh, take the bag and go to the cash register. Come on, 15 minutes. Then the alien cashier. Yeah, we have to give him money. Pay for the milk. The weird gas station. I'm really interested. I see. Hey, watch out. Right, and this is when she almost gets hit by the truck. You could have died. There we go. The world's a cruel and dangerous place. Alright, so we're back here now. My journey continues. If you think about it, uh, yes, there are just you. Right now, it can feel a cloud. You're sad. Are you sure this is really happening? What else could it be? Nothing. You know what? What? Since I'm a character in a visual novel, I want to talk to whoever is reading this right now. If you say so. I forcefully squeeze my head with my hands and place a thought block. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a small bench, 
the perfect place for cliched visual novel monologues. I move closer, place a noticeably weighted bag of milk next to it, and raise my head to the sky. Listen. I'm a little embarrassed, haha. I realize that I'm going crazy. The medications are becoming less and less effective, so... Ultimately, things will happen painlessly, I hope. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh... Yes. Please capitalize it, you're ruining the narrative. Yes. Really? I must be nothing like the model protagonist at all, huh? To be honest, I haven't read many visual novels. Sometimes I regret it, because now it costs me a lot of effort just to distinguish between letters and words. By the way, if you don't mind, I'd rather not name my diagnoses. Let at least you be the one who sees me for who I am. Even though I made you up, don't take that away from me, okay? Don't ask me for too much. How stupid does this all seem? From the very beginning, you've been following me, reading my delusional thoughts, hearing my silly conversations. I must seem crazy and weird to you. Haha. <laughs> what is it like to see the world through my eyes? Ever since, ahem, something happened, all I see is red. Red blood, everywhere. No, don't worry about me. I got used to it a long time ago. Admittedly, I'd even forgotten what other colors looked like. Come on, haha. <laughs> Those monsters from the store? They didn't scare me at all. After all, I know they won't hurt me. Hey, Wheat, thanks for coming. And uh, thanks for the raid. Uh, we are currently playing uh, Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk which is kind of a psychological horror game about an individual who has a mental illness of some variety and uh, is um, visualizing things as a visual novel in order to help them with their intention of buying a bag of milk. Um, so yeah, um, we are uh, we're making our way through the first one. This first one is very short. Um, so I think I'm almost through it. Um, and then we're going to move on to the sequel, uh, Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, Outside a Bag of Milk, um, which follows directly after. Hey, Dan, thanks for coming. Um, so yeah, um, she is currently uh, sitting on a bench talking to the uh, quote-unquote reader um, of this visual novel um, about their issues that they're having. Sometimes I think that they themselves are afraid of me. Can you imagine that? By the way, if you want to ask me what happened, please don't. Promise? Sure. If we didn't use capitals, uh, she gets mad at us for breaking the narrative. Really? Promise? Yes. Hey, Mac. Thanks for being here. Yes. Trust me. Do I have to s What if I say no? Promise me. Yes. Really? We already went over this. Come on. I don't know how many times I have to say yes, because uh, saying no pretty basically means it's not going to happen. Maybe I have to say, okay, let's try. Yes, I promise. I'm serious. There we go, okay. Of course, you couldn't help but ask. In the end, I'm just talking to myself. Sooner or later, I would have brought it up. So you're really that interested in what happened to me? I won't waste time. What do you see? Red. Anyway... I guess that was not a, uh, an answer that they had in the, uh, database. This is my dad. Oh. Uh, okay. Some of his parts, at least. Oh. Okay. We do have a very difficult family. 
But despite all the problems, I n never would have thought. Uh, sorry, I should have raised my voice. Or shouldn't have raised my voice. Anyway, he jumped out the window and died. Oh, shit. This is my last memory. Then, a long gap. Strange. Very strange. Today is the first time I've ever been able to buy something in a store without a major incident. Of course, the medicine helped me, however... I think it's more your merit. I kept thinking, we mustn't screw up in front of the reader. Or, oh my god, what will he think? Haha. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to become a visual novel character for the sake of going to the store today, but it clearly paid off. Thank you. By the way, it seems to me that there are some boundaries in our communication. That's how I like it. Haha. <laughs> and yet, I've been so sad lately. I've been thinking more and more about what my life has become, ever since my dad... Well, you know. Day after day, it's the same thing. I've tried so many medications that I hardly feel any difference between them anymore. As long as they help keep me on my feet, I'm happy, haha. <laughs> but you know what? Today is a special day because I have you. There's so much I want to tell you. you... What? That was very rude of you. Oh no. I'm not going to pressure you, I'm just advising you to go home. I understand. Well, dear reader, shall we go? I'm not sure what they said that was rude. When I get to my floor, I hang over the railing. Repeating this action every day like a ritual, I stopped being afraid of heights altogether. A few minutes ago, the effects of the medicine finally wore off, so I just enjoy the blissful silence. When I'm under the influence of drugs, terrible and unpleasant melodies sound in my head. Mixing with the sounds of the world around me, they create a terrible dissonance in my head. I turn around and go to my apartment. Hi. Did you bring the milk? Hi, Mom. Did you bring the milk? Yes, Mom. Did your new medicine help? Yes, Mom. Go to bed. Yes, Mom. And we got the milk bot achievement. Help me buy milk. Oh, okay. But we, we just... We just went through this. Is that the end? Or is it a loop? Okay, let me just... Give me a second here. I just want to make sure we're not going to just be going through the whole thing all over again. Okay, yeah, so that is the end of the game then. Okay. Alright, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's the end of the first one. Um, the first one is very short. Um, that I, w I was already aware of that I, it was only good. The first one was only going to be about like half an hour uh, to finish, um, which is about correct. Um, so now we're going to move on to the second one. We did successfully buy milk. And now the second one is going to be us um, trying to go to bed.
on. Come on. There it is. All right, let's continue. This game contains flashing images and touches on heavy topics. So, something to keep in mind if anyone has uh, epilepsy or is sensitive to that manner of thing. Oh, there's actually a save menu for this one. Cool. That's very loud. Can I adjust the volume again? Okay, um, yes, I uh, had to uh, adjust, had to adjust the volume on my own computer because the uh, the audio would have been coming through on my microphone because it was really loud. Um, so okay, so you're in your room. Uh, hopefully that it get, gives me the option to adjust the volume once we get through this initial cutscene uh, part. Um, so I had to uh, adjust the volume in OBS too, so we didn't blow all your ears out. Uh, playful shadows dance around me here and there. They dash all over the walls, the ceiling. One of those shadows whizzes past me, touching my face ever so slightly. I smile and continue walking, paying it no mind. Sometimes it's so easy to lose self-control and track of time. Spinning in a joyful dance. But I'm in a bit of a hurry here. Mom told me to go to bed. I walk past the kitchen on, on the way to my room. The door is shut, but I can still feel the chilling air coming from the other side. My first thought is that there's a living corpse blowing into the keyhole, laughing mockingly. Ha <laughs> ha that's so silly. I'm absolutely sure we have no corpses in our kitchen. I know for sure that we've never had any corpses in our kitchen. I'm absolutely sure that... I break into a run and dash toward the closed door. The shadows intensify their chaotic dance. Are they trying to stop me or calm me down? I don't know. It doesn't matter right now. 
Don't you get it? I wave my hands around as I run, trying to chase away my annoying pursu pursuers. But then I suddenly realize that I won't be able to stop in time. I've got no other choice but to break the door now. If there's somebody inside, I'll surely scare them to death. But wait, how can I scare to death someone who's already dead? What if it actually revives them? No, 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 I don't want that. What do I do? I couldn't fully complete my thought when my shoulder hit the door and it flew open. The graphics are way more impressive this time. As I expected, there was no living corpse inside. But there was a bag of milk I bought today, sitting right in the middle of the table, watching me with its unblinking eyes. I stare back. Nothing happens. Although, what exactly did I expect? Gratitude? Have I done something that warranted it? A bag of milk probably doesn't care whether it's on the shelf in a store or on the table in my mom's kitchen. On the other hand, nobody would drink milk inside the store, which means I took it from the safest place in the world and into the scary unknown. I'm so sorry, you poor thing. I turn away in shame and leave the room in a hurry. I only bring others trouble. I walk toward my room through a narrow corridor. I meet a familiar formless creature at the door. It, lo it locks me in its clutches and starts sniffing every inch of my body like a hungry dog. That's a... Uh, Big spooky thing. I'm not struggling. I know it's useless. I just stay silent and endure its tight grip that stops me from moving. Hey, lunatic. Thanks for coming. Uh, we are uh, currently trying to go to bed after buying some milk. This is milk outside of a bag of milk outside of a bag of milk. Our protagonist character has some uh, psychological issues. After sniffing me from head to toe, the creature holds out its ugly paws, bearing a single claw, thin and sharp like a blade. Again? I stare questioningly into the monster's bottomless eye sockets. Don't move. Uh, we, pre we can presume that this is her mother from the end of the first game. The creature squeezes my hands until my veins start bulging, and I just keep staring into the black cavities where its eyes should be, ignoring all pain. I've promised so many times. Stay put. The moment it says that, its claw pierces my arm. I don't feel anything other than the barely discernible crawling under my skin and the ring of tightly sprung sinews. But then, then the claw injects its venom into me. So I believe that this is her mother giving her her medication. It hurts. A white veil appears in front of my eyes. My fingers cramp and I start twitching frantically. I lose control over my body and I slowly slide to the floor, just like last time. But, why? Why do I feel so hot? I feel my blood boiling up. Strong shivers run through my body, paralyzing every single cell, while my veins and arteries heat up, almost bursting from that pressure. I try screaming, but instead of producing words, I vomit thick, milky foam. The creature notices it and throws itself at me in anger grabbing me by the throat while keeping the poisonous claw inside my arm. Kill me. Kill me. Hysterical screams resound through the corridor. In a fit of madness, the creature starts scratching my neck. Bright splashes fly everywhere, hitting the walls with a loud sound. I try to imprint where every drop fell in my memory so I could gather them all later. I need to remember... I need... A new wave of pain washes over me. Everything turns pitch black in an instant. S 
say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. I say it. I'll never drink milk ever again. Say it again. I'll never drink milk ever again. I'll never drink milk ever again. Okay then. Ah, here we go. Okay, so I've got interactions. I finally get to my room. I'm so tired of all this fuss. Thankfully, I still feel comfy and warm in my room. Even the weird sounds coming from the outside don't make me anxious at all. Now, here we go. Okay, so I can save the game. Can I adjust the volume? Okay, for some reason, this one doesn't have a volume option. The other one did. That's really weird, because they made this very loud. How is the volume, by the way? Does it need to be higher or lower? I can't quite... I can't tell on my end uh, how it sounds to you guys. So uh, let me know if it needs adjusting. Okay. Mom told me to go to bed, so I need to perform all the needed preparations. I've washed my face, and now I'm standing in front of the mirror with a toothbrush in my mouth. I look at my reflection. It shows absolutely no desire to sleep. Yeah, I get how you feel. And there was a time when the last minutes before I sleep were my favorite time of the day. I loved anticipating the inevitable moment when the reality and the dream world would clash. I woke up for that moment's sake, lived through the day for it. My biggest dream was to sleep all day long. It would have been so cool, but the dreams always slowly but surely slipped away. Okay, thanks, Mac. as if somebody fished them out of my head, one after another, one after another, until nothing was left. And now I have to sleep again, even though I don't feel any need for it. After finishing with my face, I usually reach out for my pills. It's funny. But I have no idea how they work separately, since I always swallow them as a bunch without thinking. Now I want to have a better look at it, to twirl it between my fingers, to chew on it. I'd do anything to stall for just a little bit more time. A smooth, protruded red capsule is looking at me. It's covered in a murky, semi-transparent film, but I can still discern its contents. So what do we have inside you? I gently press on the capsule from both sides, and, to my surprise, it turns out to be soft and squishy. I press harder and the capsule pops. Sticky, bright red liquid pours out. Filthy, filthy. The pill flies straight to the waste bin, and I start rigorously washing my hands. No, there's no way I'm drinking that. Next was a flat pill of the same blood red color. There were some letters printed out on it. Oh, I get it. This is the medicine that makes me really sleepy. But it's not the type of sleep I want. That's not it at all. It's fake. No, no, no. I don't even want to look at it. The pill flies into the waste bin as well. The next half an hour goes by in a similar fashion. I study every pill from all sides, and then I find a reason not to swallow it. I invent my own medicine instead, and enjoy swallowing them one after another, letting myself drown in their healing effects. Hey, my neck doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my hand doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my head doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my heart doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Hey, my eyes don't hurt anymore. How come I didn't think of this earlier? This is so simple. I need to brag about it to someone right away. But not to my mom. She'll just scold me. And she's sure I'm already sleeping anyway. I don't want to disturb her without reason. I'll think of something myself. Besides, I just really want some small talk. 
I wonder who's going to be my conversation partner. Hey, long time no see. Okay, so let's save here. So that we can reload from this point. Because uh, this one does have five different endings, apparently. So we're going to play through it once, and then I'm going to use a guide um, so that we can see the other endings. Uh, I've already got one prepared, so but I haven't read it, so... We're, go we're going through this blind first, and uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, it hasn't even been an hour. Or... You know we're only supposed to meet once a day. You know we're only supposed to meet once a day, right? Why does your voice sound so grim? Naturally, I've read the manual. Judging by the pictures, the overdose side effects are the usual headaches, dizziness, exhaustion. Hey, Lucky. Thanks for coming. Um, we, we've already gone through, uh, milk inside a bag of milk inside a bag of milk, and we're on to the sequel, where we are preparing for bed, after having successfully purchased milk. Uh, basically, nothing I can't handle by myself. After all, now I know how to do it. You didn't reply. Aren't you even a little bit happy? Not even the slightest bit? I'm pretty exhausted after today. Well, I guess you are too. That's not true. You need to go to bed. No, you've been in control for way too long already. It's my turn now. All right. I'll just stay silent until the medicine's effects wear off. How about that? Hey, you can't do that. You need to do your best to make me feel better. Okay, so I believe that we are taking on the role of her hallucination. <laughs> Uh, which the medicine is supposed to help with, which she is not taking. That's exactly what I'm doing. What a bully. Actually, why am I even worried about this? In reality, I don't need you. At all. Hmm? I'm so energetic and I feel great, which means I can do anything. And you, you can only watch and agonize over your uselessness. Hehehe. <laughs> I can imagine how angry you are right now. What made you so happy all of a sudden? And why would I be sad? Remember yourself a couple of hours ago. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> uh, did I start a new D&D campaign? The game was so bad. Oh, that's a shame. Like, if... Uh, when it comes down to it, you have to do what's best for you. Um, and if that means leaving the campaign, then that's what you have to do. Um, like, have you tr have you tried talking to the DM about it? Because it's entirely possible that they just might not realize it. Um, wor like, working with the DM to resolve issues is part of an interactive experience. Um, but, uh, but if you have, like, spoken with them and things aren't going to change, then, then yeah, leaving is probably the best option. Um, but, uh, but I hope that either things work out in your campaign, or you find a better one. Because I know that it can definitely be hard to, uh, to find a good game. Um, I'm going to be, uh, uh <laughs> playing in a new game with, uh, with actually, uh, Probable Wheat, who, uh, um, just raided me a few minutes ago. Um, they're going to be DMing a game, and uh, so we're looking forward to that. That should be fun. Okay, stop lying. Nah, I still don't understand. Whatever. Unlike you, I won't forget that pathetic, snotty girl for a long time. She just whines and whines all the time. Don't even try ruining my mood. I want to have fun while we're together, alright? So you're the one calling the shots now? Yeah. Uh, how what, Lucky? 
Well, let's see how long you can last. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, the first game only had two endings. Um, the... Um, the first one was just a short game. It was either you successfully buy the milk, or, uh, she gets mad at you and, uh, you fail to do so. I... Am I really that pathetic? Say something. I can feel tears streaming down my cheeks, hanging from my chin, and then falling on my clothes, burning holes in them. That was fast, but not unexpected. Hey, at least I tried. Go wash your face, then we'll decide what to do with you. I like her shirt, though. And I like the whole aesthetic of this game. It's much easier to parse things than the first one. The first one was very esoteric in its use of visuals. I'm in front of a mirror again. I keep staring at my reflection, trying not to get distracted by the sneery look the walls are giving me, trying not to drown in their giggling. But then me in the mirror also shows me a creepy, a creepy smile, bares her teeth at me. I shut my eyes, but that doesn't help. It wouldn't have helped even if I sunk through the floor. I start counting in my mind. Two squared, two by two squared, a square squared, a square pyramid squared, a pyramidal structure cubed, a pyramidal structure hypercubed. I feel better. But my head is splitting apart now. How do you feel? You're mocking me, right? I'm obligated to ask you this at least a couple of times per session. A session, huh? You don't like that word? I'm fine. No, you're not. I... Don't know why, but I thought I'd be able to take control. I was almost ready to. I was sure I'd be able to change something. After all, I was able to buy milk, you know? Yeah, you ought to know how challenging it was. Is that why you threw away the medicine? What a stupid decision, right? Whatever it was, it was your decision. Does it even matter? Yes. Somehow I find it hard to believe. Then why did you do that? I felt like I'd be able to fight it on my own. It's true, the pain subsided for a bit at that time, but now I feel it in triple in force. It hurts so bad. You know what to do. Dejected, I reach out for the shelf with my medicine. I swallow the pills, one after another, chasing away the unpleasant visions that keep floating up in my memory. And yet, my mind still draws a terrifying picture. Lumps of coagulated blood in transparent coating travel down my esophagus, scratching its soft walls, leaving behind furrows. I shake my head violently. I don't care if it makes me feel dizzy or worsens my pain. I just don't want to think about something so repulsive. You still haven't changed. What do you mean? You're afraid of being alone. This worries you much more than pain. Yeah, I guess. I toss the last pill into the air and catch it with my mouth. That's impressive. I couldn't do that. Next stiff. That is the thing about visiting my folks, is that their guest bed is not ideal for me. It's a memory foam bed, but it's really soft, so I kind of just sink into it and it frigs with my back and neck. I lie on the floor. I look at the ceiling. 
I can clearly hear water running in the metal pipes up there. I hear the cracking of concrete blocks that will someday surely fall on my head. But I'm not afraid of that at all. I can't imagine my death coming from above. Rather, it's rearing its claws from somewhere below, waiting for me to lose focus. Do you want to talk about it? No, I've had enough of talking. I love the color contrast in this. I, I just love high contrast artwork. What do you want then? I, I just want to lie down for a bit. Even if the ceiling is bound to collapse, it won't be today. Can you stay silent, please? I need to get my thoughts in order. Well, la-dee-da. That is some really cool perspective. I carefully extract thoughts that are yet to be fully formed from my head and lay them out on the ceiling in orderly rows. Now it's my cork board. Wait, so where is, where are they? Okay, so, got a window. I think these are shelves. Okay, so I think this is the ceiling. Yeah, very neat. In hopes of seeing the whole picture, I switch them from one place to another pile them on top of each other, scatter them around. In the end, I throw them off with my hand, annoyed, and start over. But I can't do it. You can always imagine your thoughts as something small and swarming, like cockroaches. Ew, I hate cockroaches. Can I make them fireflies? I don't mind either way. Okay, yes. And so, from what I understand, the different endings are determined by how many of the fireflies you catch and certain other choices that you make um, after this point. Um, yeah. I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts, they're fireflies now, start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. Actually, I do just, I am just going to quickly check that. Um, because if then, if I can save here, um, then I won't have to go through all the rest of that stuff, um, for us to get the other, uh, things. Um, okay. Yeah, so the ending the player gets relies on the number of fireflies the player is able to collect, and whether or not, okay, they've gotten these two achievements. Okay. Okay. Okay, yes. So all of the, the endings are determined after the fireflies are released. Alright, so I can save here and then we can just continue from this point. Um, once, once we're able to interact with things. Um, I don't even have time to blink before my thoughts, they're fireflies now, start whirling all over the ceiling of their own accord, forming whimsical patterns. I can only observe them and wait for the right moment. It's just, that moment doesn't come. The mocking sounds of flapping wings coming from the ceiling make me start to lose, start losing my patience. Enough! I hate you! I spring to my feet and scream at the top of my lungs. The fireflies scatter. Good job. Now start over. No way. 
Unstable behavior makes you look bad. I don't give a damn. So that doesn't bother you? Should it? Uh, I'm going to save here. Okay. And then we can proceed from this point. Yes. And what do you want me to do then? I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> You're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Fine. I raise my eyes to look at the ceiling once more. Sadly, all my fireflies seem to be hiding somewhere. I need to find them. I glance around the room. There are too many places for a creature as small as a firefly to hide here. They can be anywhere. Suddenly, I hear a deafening rumble. The clock just hit midnight. It's so late already, but I can't go to bed now. Will you help me? Please, tell me you'll help me. Come on, stop bullying me. You promised to talk to me. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? What do you mean? You should know it better than anyone else. Hmm. That's the thing, I have no idea. This is weird. Will you tell me? I... Oh. Okay. I roll my sleeves and start rubbing my eyes intensely. They're so itchy. Why are you crying? My eyes are itchy. Did you drink milk? Did you drink milk or did he bring milk? Did you drink milk? I wonder, if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, will my eyes stop itching? Oh, I've, I've had days like that. Eyelashes suck. I wonder, if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, all my eyelashes, one after another, if I tear out all my eyelashes, one after another, what have you done? I need to gather the glass, and then... Then I need to have a bath, and then... Here, drink some milk. No! I stand in the middle of the room, my mouth agape, gasping for air. I think I just experienced death. I don't know any other way to explain what happened. Well, that was surely something. Wait, did I just... Okay, yes, yeah, so I got the first death achievement. There, are, There is a first death and a second death achievement, which are tied to uh, the endings. Well, that was surely something. Will you tell me or not? About what? Let's look for the fireflies instead. You're acting weird. Help me instead of running your mouth. I've already had enough adventures before bed. I need to gather my thoughts quickly and go to bed. But my thoughts are hiding from me. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea where to look for them. Me neither. I guess we'll have to tear the whole place apart. No, 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 and no. If I make even the, even the smallest of messes here, I'll feel really bad. All the things should stay in their places, and that's it. Why? Uh, let's see. Are you trying to come up with a reason right now? Who, me? No, of course not. I think you forgot to put up your mind block. I can see through you. Rude. Alright then. So we need to find a bunch of tiny insects inside a mountain of junk without moving anything even an inch. Yeah. My oh my. 
I have an idea. Last time, becoming a visual novel character helped me achieve my goal. Now I want to become a point-and-click adventure game character. You know, those games have moments when you just look at different objects and something inevitably happens. It sounds so fun. And what about the things you use regularly? Do you refuse to touch them as well? It would make it even more interesting. This is so childish. And want to know what's the best part? You'll be the one doing it. Oh no. Oh yes. Excuse me. I start panicking as soon as I get in a multiple choice situation. I'll just keep changing my mind and end up crying and running away. Do you want that to happen? You're such a handful. You've already proven that you're able to make decisions. Why not continue on that road? Come on, don't be so boring. I was just teasing you. You don't have to bear the whole burden. Asking for help is a reasonable decision, too. Let's begin already. I go to the middle of the room and look around. Where would I hide if I was a tiny firefly? Ah, this is so thrilling. My heart gets warmer from the pleasant anticipation. Hey. What? Look down. I look down. After a moment, a small ball of light and warmth crawls out from under my sweater. Wowie! <laughs> There's smoke coming from your clothes. <laughs> whatever. I carefully grab the firefly. It's pleasantly scorching to the touch. I put it on my shoulder. I'm sorry, little guy. Time to come home now. As if it was an order, the firefly slowly drifts up, circles around my head for a bit, and then flies into my ear with the speed of a bullet. Blech. <laughs> it tickles. One down. Let's look for the others. Yeah. All right, so now we need to look in things to try and find where they, the other fireflies are. All right, so let's uh, start from the top left here. I tilt my head backwards and almost fall over. The closet is hanging under the ceiling, at least 300 feet off the floor. Are you joking? Even though it's my room, not everything here is for me to use. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, I don't care. At all. Like, totally. And I'm definitely not worried. Not even the littlest bit. Not even a smidgen of the littlest bit. Not even for a thousandth of a percent. That's how much I don't care. Hey, I'm not even done telling you how much I don't care. From this moment on, I'm ignoring you. Oh no, you don't. Then act normal. All right, so not in the, uh... Oh, cool, so when you click on something, it, uh, takes it off of what you can click on, so I'm not gonna accidentally go through two things at once. Or uh, go through things a second time. All right, let's check the plants. Right, insects enjoy pollinating the flowers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess. I get close to the flower shelf. I sniff around. The leaves smell of dust and cardboard, and death. You know those plants are long dead, right? I'm not sure a dead plant will be able to attract any insects. Well, we kind of don't have a choice here, you know? Still, you're right. Let's continue searching. Why don't you just throw them out? Weren't you listening to me at all? All right, so she doesn't want to throw out the uh, the old plants. Uh, let's check her uh, toothbrush. I turn my eyes toward an inconspicuous shelf near the mirror. There's a glass with a toothbrush sitting on it, and a small towel is hanging nearby. What a wonderful sight. Wait, so she's just got a sink and mirror in her bedroom? That's, uh, interesting. 
My fireflies are smart and good. They would never get in there. They know about personal hygiene. Okay, let's look somewhere else. Let's check the notes. Why is the mirror shifting? That's weird. Your usual notebook pages, glued to the wall with duct tape. Numbers are drawn on them. It's the only kind of information I can take in without trouble. Dosage and side effects? Yeah. I thought you know them by heart. Yeah. This is not your handwriting, is it? Of course it's not. Shaky, broken lines, ugly numbers. It's not writing, it's more like claw marks. Don't forget to thank your mom. I don't need your advice. My scream makes the pages rustle restlessly. After a moment, a firefly appears from underneath one of them. Achoo! Excuse me. After looking around in a business-like manner, it takes off into a business-like flight and ends up entering my business-like ear. Hey. Let's continue searching. Ah, let's check the pills. I look at the mound of pills and it makes me feel dizzy. I don't want to think about it. I don't. What's wrong? <laughs> I've almost skipped my dose for today. How reckless. I could have died. Hey, calm down. You've already fixed that. Yes, because you ordered me to. Sorry, I had to clear my throat. <clears throat> Alright. Um, is that an accusation? Of course not. It was what saved me. Well, that's reasonable. I heave a deep sigh, come closer, and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. The moment those words leave my lips, one of the bottles overturns. Pills rain down from it, and along with them, a firefly. Hooray! After circling above my head a couple of times, it finally lands in my palm. The firefly rushes up my arm, and upon reaching my shoulder, crawls straight into my ear. My mind becomes a bit clearer. Cool, so we've already got two. Whoa. That seems not good. Rest well, Lucky. Thanks for coming. Oh, it won't let me click on, uh, whatever this is. Milk boxes, maybe? Let's click on the garbage can. Can. I get close to the waste bin and look inside it with curiosity. Pill packaging, notebook pages, and other garbage. Boring. There's nothing here. Indeed, no self-respecting firefly would hide in a heap of garbage. Can't disagree with you here. Okay. There's still this that we can't click on. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's the clock and the radio here. At least I think that's a radio. But she's got another radio here. So I'm not sure what that is. I look at the alarm clock. Time continues its unstoppable flow. It's so late. Are you tired? You bet I am. I let out a theatric yawn and hold out my arms to the sides. One, two. Then I raise them above my head. Three, four. Maybe a little workout will help me freshen up. Good idea. Do you remember the exercises you've been taught? I think so. <laughs> I take a hesitant stance. What was it? 
heels together, toes apart? Whatever, I'll go with that. Count down five minutes. Fine, you have a clock right in front of you, though. I can't look at its hands for too long. At first, I feel like they start moving in the wrong direction. Then they disappear altogether. And then things always get messy. Last time, I saw a pair of eyes on the clock face. And also, I used to hear voices back in the day. They pleaded for help, I think. What a mess. Truly a mess. It was a mess, right? Mess. Well, are you counting down? My god, finally. What do you mean? I was trying to get through to you for half an hour. Huh? Forget it. Do you see the firefly? No. Let's continue searching, then. Well, that's not good. Oh. I guess it is a radio. Let's check the grate. It's not easy to get out of here. <laughs> okay. The other radio. Oh. Okay. Let's not click on that. Uh, how about the AC unit? I look up toward a very high place under my ceiling. I can hear a countless number of small legs marching inside the AEC unit. Oh well. What happened? Fireflies can't be friends with cockroaches. We'd better look somewhere else. Ooh, she's got cockroaches inside the air conditioning? That's not great. Why would cockroaches be there? Have you forgotten? You were the one who told me to think of my thoughts as cockroaches. Yes, but... They became fireflies afterwards, but cockroaches don't disappear just like that. So they occupied this place. Do you understand now? Uh, that's... Ugh. Okay, sure. Okay, well... Jeez. Alright, so there's still quite a few uh, things to look at here. And what are those? Ah, those. Those are the photos of my best memories. But they're blank. I stared at them so intensely that I burned them with my eyes. <laughs> now they're just covering the cracks in the walls. Cracks? Forget it. Are we continuing the search or what? Okay, we are. Hmm. I have a feeling that this is all in her mind. Check the laptop. I look at my laptop. I haven't touched it for years, so it's covered with a layer of dust as thick as my finger. A bizarre item. I fear it. Why? It's a long and boring story. Wonderful. Tell me about it. Hmm. I insist. I don't remember. I don't remember how it appeared in my room. One of my parents probably brought it here because they couldn't find a better place for it. They didn't prohibit me from using it. On the other hand, they encouraged me to do so. Sure, I've spent my whole days in front of the screen. Games, drawing, engineering, calculator, 3D modeling. So much fun stuff to do. You had amusing hobbies. Yeah, I did, before entering the web. Hmm? Imagine this. You're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable living. Did you imagine? As always, your analogies are spot on. Okay, I imagined. Alright, so you're a hamster that lives underground. You have everything for comfortable for comfortable living, okay? Okay. Wonderful. And here's the situation. You're a hamster that lives... Okay, I got it. Do you want to talk about something else? Yeah. Mm. 
we'll end up returning to that subject anyway. On one wonderful day, someone digs you up from your hamster house and brings you to the pet store. Now your new home is a cage. It's way more comfortable and warm compared to the underground. And the most important part, you have a lot of neighbors here. Their cages are identical to yours. And the other hamsters look identical to you too. That means you're all the same. Apart from the fact that they were born at that shop. You'll ask, what does that indicate? And I'll tell you, nothing at all. And I forgot what I was talking about. Gosh. Okay, let's start over. This time, try to avoid stupid hamster analogies. You know I'm not at fault here. So, I had a lot of friends online. Tens, hundreds of them. Impossible to count. Is it impossible, though? I had exactly 317 of them. Although, I guess nobody counts the exact number of hamsters when they walk into a pet shop. Hey, don't get distracted. Oh, right. From my 317 friends, 68 were into gaming, just like me. 130 of them liked drawing, just like me. The remaining 119 were into calculators and 3D modeling equally. And when I say equally, I don't mean 59 and a half friends on each side. Alright? You can split numbers evenly no problem, but math doesn't work like that when it comes to friends. A major conundrum, right? Get to the point. I knew, of course, that no real people exist on the web. <laughs> okay, uh, well, whatever you think, lady. I also understood that all of my friends die the moment I turn off my laptop. Okay, we need to teach you about a little thing called object permanence. But I still wasn't even a bit worried. Why? Do you know what computer programs consist of? It's just a combination of numbers. Which means my friends are also numbers. Isn't that amusing? Not really. Why do you call them your friends? I mean, everyone who shares my interests is my friend, and I don't care, wh care whether they know about my existence or not. Anyway, as I was saying, every program has its own algorithm and purpose, its mathematical formula. And if you solve that formula, you'll be able to predict the program's behavior at any moment. The longer you speak, the less I follow. You don't need to follow me around, just listen. I sit on the floor, and the laptop screen ends up right in front of me. The only thing reflected in it is my dim face. A web person is just a random picture and a random string of letters. Words and actions from the web person are just executable code. Hey, let me know if you need a break. One day, someone appeared. From that point on, my laptop was always on. There are no real people on the web, but he was good at pretending. At some moment, I let him trick me. Hey, look. Huh? Suddenly, a firefly slowly crawls out of the laptop's vent grill. I reach for it. It gets on top of my palm, blinking all the while. I think it's trying to say something. I can see that myself. If only I knew what. It looks like a cipher. Don't you want to crack it? I changed my mind. I have absolutely no desire to find out what it wants to say. The firefly stops glowing for a moment after that. Then it starts glowing again, as if coming back to its senses. For some time, it thinks about the further course of actions, then flies up and dashes into my ear. Let's continue searching. And what about your story? You must be mad at me for interrupting you. I'm sorry. If you do everything right, I'll finish my story. Maybe. Do you promise? I promise. And if you forget? Then remind me. With a code word, for example. Oh, we got the, uh, please forget it achievement. What code word? I'll think of one later. And for now, let's keep searching for my fireflies. Oh, okay, so I can choose to finish now, or I can continue looking for the rest of the fireflies. Uh, for this play, let's look for the other fireflies. Let's try and find all of them. Oh, 
I doubt it. All the compartments are locked. What if... I don't even want to think about what's inside. Who knows what I'll end up imagining. Still can't click on the uh, milk curtains. Let's check her bed. Haha, <laughs> this is my sleeping bag. It's soft and warm. I'm sure that no living creature would be able to resist the temptation to spend a minute or two inside. They'd want to dig deep into it with a couple of favorite items, close their eyes, and then... Hey, did you fall asleep? Huh? I gently slap my cheeks to return myself to senses. It's already way past midnight. Usually I'd be sleeping like a log at this time, but right now I can't. Let's continue searching. Hey, maybe we'll find something inside. Nah, my thoughts don't have a feature of putting it to sleep. Quite the contrary, they always cause insomnia, just like tonight. Okay. This is my sketchbook. Half its pages are blank, which means it'll still be good for a couple of years. You draw that rarely? Why? Isn't that obvious? If I run out of pages, I'll have to buy a new sketchbook. I can't get to the stationery store on foot. I'll have to take the bus. Do you, even, do you even realize what kind of nightmare that can turn into? Well, maybe you can ask your mom to buy you one. Buy what? Ask whom? Can you even form coherent sentences? Don't play dumb. Ask your mom to buy you a notebook instead. Instead? So you want me to perform a string of actions, but you're also telling me to do one instead of another? Then how would I decide which action to take? You're so dyslexic. Man, you're a tough case. You lack empathy. Is that my fault? Well, yes, technically it is, since we're her hallucination. I get closer to the sketchbook, stepping over the wires, the sleeping bag, the cracks in the laminate, and the window's reflection. The sketchbook is lying on the stool. From my height, it seems like the stool is missing two, two legs. I squat and look again. All the legs are in place. Will I be able to think of an interesting allegory? Oh, let's not go there, okay? I stand up and study the sketchbook from inches away. Its pages are pure white. The last drawing is buried on the previous page, the way it should be. Too bad, I'd love to see it. Maybe next time. A sudden gust of chilly wind breaks into the room and makes the pages rustle. Oh no. I shut my eyes. A distinctive sound of pages turning echoes with it with headache in my head. I know what's going to happen. The rustling has stopped, even though the wind is still howling from every direction. It can only mean one thing. The notebook is open on the first page. If I wait a little longer, the wind will close it. I won't have to look if I wait a little longer. If I wait, open your eyes. No. It's okay, just do it. No way, I know you're lying. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Calm down. No. Come on, calm down. Fine, there we go. I open my eyes with utmost caution. The notebook is still open in the middle. No drawings, nothing. The pages are still pure white. Did I imagine it? I don't know, did you? You're the smart one here, you tell me. Next time, don't close your eyes. What did you... I couldn't finish speaking because the pages started moving again. Don't close your eyes. Don't make me do it, I'm scared. Trust me. The rustling grows louder. The pages lift up. I can almost see the outlines of drawings on previous pages. No way. Everything that's in the past should stay in the past. You couldn't convince me. That's it. I'm closing my eyes. Look. Look there. A barely visible light seeps through the pages. With every new gust, it becomes brighter and brighter. A firefly. The wind immediately stops. For a moment, 
The world sinks into perfect silence, but only for a moment. The buzz that has always been haunting me fills the surroundings, but it doesn't matter now. Goodness gracious, little boy, you made me so scared. The firefly blinks, flies up in, and enters my ear, buzzing loudly all the way. It spends some time looking for the perfect spot in my head, but then its buzzing dies down. Phew. Are you okay? We're running short on time, so let's continue searching. Okay, let's check her backpack. I look down. My school bag, worn down and silly, is almost screaming of its own uselessness. From another angle, it looks like a full belly. Its contents are also regurgitating, decomposing, and turning into a sticky, mushy substance. What a cool image. I need to remember this. Hmm. Totally not cool. Tell me what's inside your bag instead. Nothing special. Mostly just all sorts of books. I've taken out all the pens and notebooks out of there, and I'm not interested in anything else. You used to go to school, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I had a blast all the way. Are you sure you understood my question? Do you think everything in my life should be doom and gloom? Well, you're wrong. All right, all right. What did you like most there? Hmm. Well, the rooms were really bright, not like at home. That's it? Don't rush me. Let me remember. Well, the beds were also soft, and the food was nice. By the way, I attended all the classes. The others always skipped. They probably got told off so hard. I smiled gently, absorbed in warm memories. You never graduated, though. Yeah. Do you remember your last day there? It was a normal day. Dad picked me up earlier than usual. He told me that I'm already too old for the school curriculum. I also realized that some time ago, the tasks were way too easy. Then we got into the car and went home. Mum greeted us there. We had dinner and went to our rooms. And what happened then? I don't remember. And does it even matter? Hmm. Okay. Good. I look at my bag again. Light pouring into the room through the window glints on the metal parts. And there's also a shadow underneath it. Which means it's real, sadly. Whatever. I don't care anyway. I almost end up kicking the bag in a fit of sudden anger, but I manage to stop myself in the nick of time. If I move it even an inch, the whole picture will collapse and I'll go blind. It has already happened countless times. What do you mean you'll go blind? I've spent months memorizing the location of every item in my room. That's why I can see them so clearly and vividly. You won't get it. Look at your feet. I look down and see this small insect is crawling toward me from the bag. It's barely glowing and it can't even fly. I guess this firefly is really tired. I bend down to pick it up. The firefly starts glowing brightly as soon as I touch it and then flies up. There you go, boy. Good job. After doing a victory lap around the room, it flies toward me with high speed. I shut my eyes, anticipating the firefly to enter my ear. That's exactly what happens. After it gets inside, it buzzes for a little while and then goes silent. This one's kind of sad. I wonder why. It doesn't matter. What matters is that it's no longer alone. Sure. Let's continue searching. Okay. Okay, so there's still the fan and the third radio. Geez, she has a lot of radios. Okay, so that radio doesn't do anything. All right, so it's just the fan left. Hehehe. <laughs> 
What's funny about that? I imagine myself being a firefly that's looking straight at a giant fan. And? I'd be so jealous. The only thing preventing it from flying is a cage it's locked in, and the cable. It's like an inmate, if you think about it. It's so sad. Yeah. Let's continue searching. What do you mean, continue searching? I don't think there's anything left. Unless there's... Can I click this now? Well, clicked off the screen. Why can't I click on it? All right. Because I don't think there's anything else to click on. So, okay, so we found one in the notes, two in the pills, uh, three... Did we find one in the clock? I don't think we found one in the clock. There was one in the laptop. So that's three. There was one in the note sketch pad. That was four. There's one in the, um, backpack. That's five. It's like we missed one. Okay, so none of the radios will let me click on the, uh, pile here. Alright, well, I guess we're gonna finish searching, because that's all that we can get. There's nothing else to click on. You found all the- oh, so we did find them all, okay. You found all the fireflies, amazing. I guess... I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Why not? If I lose something and then find it, it's just going back to the starting point. No changes at all. A zero sum. And happiness is always about being positive, right? You shouldn't think too much. It hurts you. I want to sleep. How about you get some fresh air before sleeping? What do you mean? Well, go to the balcony, breathe in some fresh air. Somehow, those words triggered a panic attack in me. I subconsciously step away from the balcony. That's likely to do with uh, the first game, in which we discovered that her father killed himself by jumping out a window. I don't think it's a good idea. Why? This may sound silly, but... I feel like someone is watching me. Oof, that's... That is a rough thing to say. No, alright, let's stay here. Yeah. What are you gonna do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the si same time still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside a bag of milk. And yet... And yet? You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. You won't take another pill. Of course not. In fact, I won't take it tomorrow either. And the day after tomorrow. And never ever. That's a goodbye then. No. I have one more small favor to ask. A really, really small one. What is it? I flirted out way too much today. A lot of stuff I'd want to forget forever. I don't blame you, but was it really necessary? 
We'll see you tomorrow. No, I wouldn't be able to sleep like this. Fine, what's the favor? I, um... I nervously scratch my wrists and bite on my lower lip. Wait a minute, you're afraid to tell me? Yes. I'm also scared that something bad might happen if I tell you. I'm also scared that when something bad happens, something way worse will happen. Stop, I get it already. Still, I won't leave you alone until you tell me. Bully. No, you. I crawl into my sleeping bag. The lower part of the room is very cold. I hurry to wrap myself in blankets, even though the electric heater is working hard to keep me warm. I'm sad because the dreams just won't come anymore. You won't believe me if I tell you how I dealt with it at first. Of course I'll believe you. I know, it was a joke. Well, anyway, I washed my face, brushed my teeth, lied down, and started imagining that I was watching a dream. I didn't sleep at all, of course, and always looked sleepy in the morning. After a week of insomnia, I started feeling weird and seeing things. Letters floating in the air, strange silhouettes that appeared in the most unexpected of places. Bulging eyes with trembling pale pupils. It was scary, you know? Then one day, I almost died. I just collapsed in the middle of the room and couldn't move for a while. And then silhouettes, letters, and eyes were hanging over me and hissing. It was horrible. And well-deserved, I guess. It felt like I was caught on the biggest lie in the world. Yes, it felt exactly like that. After that, I stopped. But the silhouettes, letters, and eyes stayed there. I guess they like this place. They always follow in my wake, peeping at me, and I'm kind of scared of them and can't even argue with them. But today... Today... Well... I... Still too scared to tell me? Of course, you're still listening, you know? Use your hands. Alright. I start chaotically twirling my fingers with enthusiasm, forming complex shapes. You want me to tell you a bedtime story? Shh! And I was trying so hard here, don't you get it? They'll hear you. Relax, nobody can hear you. So what do you say? I'd be happy to, but I have no idea how to tell them. Oh, it's incredibly easy. Just talk about something without stopping. Sounds silly. But it's not. And meaningless. You don't know what you're talking about. I know enough to realize that we'll just end up wasting time. Let's focus on something actually important. Boring. Fine. Close your eyes. And we got the you won't get it achievement. I wake up on a wooden bench. In front of me lies a narrow, dimly lit alley. An awfully familiar road. Where could I have seen it? Finally. I hear a voice coming from the side. I turn around and see a boy with a weird expression on his face. You're late. Um, who are you? The boy blinks in bewilderment. We're not going anywhere like this. Try again. Then he takes a very deep breath. You are late. I stare at him, confused. He stares back, also confused. Sorry? The boy nods, satisfied. See? Much better. <clears throat> Do you have a name? My name's Tresca. I give the brat an evaluating look. He's so young, yet already coming at me with questions like that. None of your business. And besides, will anyone tell me what I'm doing here? Hey, that's rude. It's not like there's somebody else here besides me. 
Haven't they told you anything? I know all there is to know, for one. About what? You're obligated to escort me to the store. Uh... Okay, this is getting real meta. Tresca says that and strikes a victory pose. No way I'm doing that. You do understand that refusal is futile. Well, aren't you full of yourself? I'm serious. I'm not the one who decided that. Do you think I'm delighted with your company? He's weird. Constantly shifting between happiness, sadness, loudness, silence. He's a wacko. And his name is stupid. Are we going or what? You can go. I need to think. I'd be happy to, but I don't know the way. Tresca puts on a cunning smile. I bite my lower lip in frustration. Ooh. Hmm, getting sleepy. I bite my lower lip in frustration. I'll be honest with you. I don't like you. He simply bursts out laughing in reply. I do like you, though. Then he grabs my hand without hesitation. I don't even have time to retort. Lead the way. Our trip to the store went fine, if not for the fact that Tresco is walking way faster than me. And, on the other hand, at times he stopped abruptly and went backwards, studying the ground underneath his feet. In the end, the trip took a lot longer than it should. What the hell? I can't read that. After reaching the store's doors, we are greeted by a sign. We're closing in 20 minutes. Okay. Who had the bright idea to indicate their working hours this way? They probably have special staff for this. Someone who runs to change the sign every five minutes. It's convenient. Are you joking? Yeah. You're so annoying. It's much better than being boring. How old are you, by the way? None of your business. Ah, and what's your name? None of your business. I was ready to slap the living hell out of this brat, but a scary-looking man suddenly appeared behind the glass. He's holding a cardboard sign that says we're closing in 15 minutes. Let's go. What are you waiting for? Huh? Oh, yeah. After another round of going ac across the long row of canned products, we realize that we're lost. I can't believe you don't know where they sell milk. I, um... Maybe we should ask somebody for directions. Sure. Hey, wait up. Tresca lets go of my hand and walks confidently toward one of the few store's customers. That person is standing with their back to us, studying something on the shelf. Hello, can I... I can't hear neither the second part of his question nor the reply he gets. But my good-for-nothing friend freezes in place, looking the customer straight in the eye. I hurry toward them. Is he yours? The customer talks to me. He speaks with disgust while wearing a scornful expression. I, um... If he's yours, please get him away from me. Yes, I'm sorry. I grab Tresca's hand and lead him away. He's still looking at the customer, his mouth ajar, and his eyes popped. He's also shaking. Only when we turn around the corner, Tresca calms down. What was that? I... I got so scared, he said... What? No, not again. Suddenly, Tresca starts screaming like crazy. I cover his mouth with my hand. His face is burning. He's crying. Can you act normal? You don't understand. Of course I don't. I don't understand anything. Annoying other people is still wrong, though. This is something you don't understand, it seems. You're mean, Sniff. Who, me? 
Tresca pushes me away and runs off. Drat. At the edge of my vision, I see the store's staff hanging a new sign on the door. There you are. I meet Tresca at the cash register. Before that, I managed to visit the milk department after finding out where it was. Hey, you, move. I hear an angry voice coming from the other side of a long queue that is formed after Tresca. I squeeze through towards him. What happened? The boy doesn't respond. He just looks at his feet and sniffs. The cashier towers over him. There's a bag of milk lying between them. Is he yours? Yes. Just leave him home next time. People in the queue nod in agreement. Pay for the goods, please. Yes, of course. And the waiting fee. What? You heard me. I did, but that's unheard of. Tresca starts giggling all of a sudden. And for the fact that your son is a retard, too. Oh, jeez. Okay. But... You heard me. You know what? In a fit of rage, I throw a banknote to the cashier, of much higher value than needed, even counting in all the stupid fees, then grab a bag of milk and turn around on my heels. We're leaving, Tresca. We spend the whole trip back in silence. At some point, we end up turning right toward a gas station. There, Tresca finally breaks his silence. Do you like ice cream? No. Okay. I look at the boy's face. A light flickers in his eyes for a brief moment and then goes out. You know... He turns away from the path and walks straight toward the highway with determination. I stare at his back, confused. The shaft head tilt. It seems like you're not helping me at all. A new playful light flickers in Tresca's eyes. So this is kind of playing through what happened in the first game, but in reverse. What is that hole? And we got the good night achievement. This is really a very interesting game. I wish they would uh, make the credits go maybe a little faster. Jeez, I think there's more special thanks than there were people who actually worked on the game. Okay, so I'm going to just take a quick break to stretch, um, and then we will uh, run through the other four endings. Um, as I mentioned before, I do have a guide up that will tell me how to get those endings, so I don't need to uh, faff around trying to find them. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take a quick break. I'll be back in just a couple minutes, and uh, then we will uh, go through the other endings.
All right, we're back. All right, so we're continuing from here. So let's uh, let me just pull this up here. Okay, so we got the you won't get it ending, which was the default, the default one. Um, so that's the one that we got. That's weird. Um, oh, okay. So you can get it by getting both the first death and second death achievements and getting all six fireflies, but it will also play if you do not meet meet the conditions for the other endings, which is clearly what happened in our case, uh, because we did not get the second death achievement. Okay, so for the next one, um, we have to skip the first death sequence, find four fireflies and get the second death sequence. I don't know how to do that, though. That's not what I wanted. Okay, just give me one second here. So we have to force them to go to the balcony. After getting first death, and please forget it. Okay. Um. Ah, uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So second death. All right. Okay. I think I get how to get the uh, the second one here now. Uh, what if we say no? A lot of people act like this. Really? There's nothing shameful about snapping at someone if you have a reason for that. You did have a reason, didn't you? You'll surely get better, believe me. And now start over. Yeah, you're at it again. What do you mean? Never mind. And I've changed my mind anyway. Please don't stay silent for this long anymore. I'm having a hard time without your help. Okay, so then this is the, uh, um, right, this is the dialogue we've already done. What were you thinking while lying on the floor? Um, okay. So we need to skip the first death sequence, find the four fireflies, and activate second death. Okay. So we're gonna say nothing. Instead of asking silly questions, help me find my fireflies. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea look, where to look for them. Yep, yeah, okay. <laughs> sure, you don't have to tell me.
do you want? Alright, so we got the one. Yep. So we just need to grab three more, which we know where they are. Whoops. I clicked on that by accident. All right. Uh, but we got the one in the notes. Uh, so that's two, then three in the pills. Um... You know, I didn't do this one, so let's, uh, let's go with this dialogue option. You'll ultimately die anyway, so why worry? Oh, you're right. I heave a deep sigh, come closer, and extend my hand. Wow, it's warm. Okay, yes, and then that's the, uh... Oh, sleeping bag, whoops. Did you fall asleep? I keep clicking on things by accident. What? Okay. So we got, that's one, two, three, we need one more. Um, which means I think we need to do the, uh, the computer. Wonderful, tell me the story. Then I'm using hobbies. We'll end up returning to the subject anyway. No hamsters. To the point. Hey, okay. he's trying to say something. So we did all that. Um, how do I get her to go to the balcony? Because it says that to get the second death, I need to make her go to the balcony. Well, clarifies, activate second death. Okay. So, do I finish searching then? I've managed to gather my thoughts, but something still worries me. On the other hand, I wasn't supposed to be happy anyway. Did I not? Okay, so I think it's part of this here. Yes, okay. If I lose something and then find it, okay, yep. Shouldn't think about it too much. Fresh air. Go to the balcony. Why? Okay, here we go. Yeah, so there's no way somebody cares about you that much. Just for a couple of minutes, okay? My apartment building looks like a bottomless cooking pot, but instead of soot, it has hundreds of concrete and metal boxes on its walls. There are lights on in the windows. There are muffled voices coming from inside. The howling wind spirals up and splits into hundreds of independent streams. Seems like it wants to be heard by every person living here. It must feel so lonely, living in endless silence. Your apartment building's pretty weird, isn't it? I want to see how high this goes. Oh, there's the, uh, the void. It's the top of her building. I wonder how far this is going to go. I want to see if the image stops at some point. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Your apartment building's pretty weird, isn't it? I could see the horizon from my window before. 
and the building grew for miles in both directions. I guess at some point it circled around and closed on itself. Nothing unusual about that. How do you feel? I definitely feel. Sometimes that's more than enough. Still, you're anxious, aren't you? Of course. Moreover, I'm completely terrified. Isn't that obvious? You're looking in every direction, but not up. Ah, this. I've already told you, haven't I? About what? Ah, uh, you know, small stuff. Can small stuff make you terrified? It's hard to explain. I climb up the metal railing and let my legs hang down. I sneak short glances at the abyss from time to time. It replies with angry, cold breath. That's how we interact, like old friends. Sometimes I feel like the whole world pretends to be crazy. As if it's trying to make me believe in something that doesn't exist. That's weird, isn't it? Yes, but... At the same time, it makes me feel a little bit happy. Everything around me was created for my sake. To deceive, to trick, to confuse me. If that's true, I guess I'm not so crazy myself, after all. You believing in this the definition of, is the definition of craziness. You're probably right. Another gust of wind blasts against the pot's walls, smashing the glass to dust and blowing away the concrete crust. I, on the other hand, feel a gentle breeze that only ruffles my hair. I still haven't come up with a code word. You were the one to remember your promise. You don't need a code word anymore. I don't like when this happens. I want to remember certain things only when I want to. Nonetheless, you've made that promise. And I'll keep it. But you need to keep in mind that from this moment on, every word will bring me pain. I bend down and imagine falling into the abyss. I have exactly two minutes before I meet my end. That'd be a long fall. I had a friend online, my best friend, even though the combination of letters he used instead of his name wasn't that cool. Well, the combination of pixels he had instead of his photo was also boring and unattractive. This is so strange and wrong, breaking the rules of being online. Why was he doing that? Maybe his code was a few lines short. I don't quite get what you mean. I could tell you about those rules. You can't find them anywhere, but I'm smart, so I figured them out myself. Although, I'm not sure if I should divulge them. Why? When I try to say what I think out loud, I tend to make mistakes. If I make just a single one, everything that comes after contradicts my thoughts. And I end up with the opposite position. And I don't want that. According to that logic, it'd be better for you to keep your mouth shut forever. Yeah, that's my dream. Keep my mouth shut. Never get up from bed, never see or hear anything. Just dream on and on. Oh, why is everything so terrible? Don't get distracted. So what was that about your friend? My friend? Ah, yes. He... he was brazen enough to... Come on, gather your thoughts. He somehow made me believe that he was real. He kept describing someone else's life to me in detail as if it was him. And he expected me to do the same. And then I told him everything about myself, without hiding a single thing. I grit my teeth. The wind whips my face without mercy. It slices my skin into uneven stripes, as if it's a piece of thin cloth. He knew more about me than anyone else in the world. You know what he did? Yes. Ah ha ha ha. Sending an army of bots to harass me was probably fun. And what's most important, it was a win-win situation. They spawn here and there, simple bits of code that are effortless to run. 
no wonder the algorithm assigns that pattern more often than the others from the list. Oh, so she trusted someone and he docks the shit out of her. Text and video generators get to work at the same time. My name surfaces on the web more and more. It's unbearable. Unbearable. From around every corner, every balcony, ceiling, attic, wall, I always feel many pairs of watchful eyes directed at me. And now they watch me from the screens, too. But I'll put an end to it. I've decided a long time ago. Though, maybe I only decided that only... My body finally crashes into the ground, smashing into millions of tiny pieces like porcelain. I'm cold. Let's get let's go back inside. Cause the falling was just a thought experiment. I return to my room. Thankfully it hasn't changed one bit in the, during the minutes I was outside. Without a second thought, I go toward my laptop and yank the power cable from the outlet. That's it. That's it. That's it. What are you going to do? What's with this silly question? I'm going to sleep, of course. Hoping that tomorrow will only come after a year or a decade. Imagining myself to be outside of my mortal shell, but at the same time still being me. Ridiculous, like milk outside a bag of milk. And yet... And yet? You don't have to talk out loud for me to understand that you're worried about me. I know that already. I also know that our time is running short. Okay, so this is, uh... The same dialogue that we had before. No... Where is it? See tomorrow, what's the favor? Is this going to be the same end? I crawl into my sleeping bag, lower parts cold. Okay. Okay, bedtime story. Be happy to. It's silly, but it's not. Okay, no, okay, so this is different now. We got the Is Anyone There achievement. I wake up lying on the cold floor in the center of her cramped room. I look around without standing up. There's no furniture, just naked walls and a single door. I can hear muffled sounds coming from the other side of it. Scary sounds. I hug my knees and wrap myself in my sweater like it's a blanket. It's no use. I'm chilled to the bone. The room is pretty spacious, but I still can't shake the feeling that I'm trapped inside. Uh, trapped inside a suffocating casket. And the faint blue glow that sneaks in through the keyhole only adds to that feeling. Do I want to know what's outside? As if on cue, an inhuman roar comes from the other side of the door. It becomes louder and louder, more and more distinct with every passing sound. So, or with every passing second, somebody or something is getting closer. I curl into a ball, trying to take up as little space as possible. Maybe I can become invisible or become smaller in some miraculous way. In the meantime, the howl becomes unbearably loud, but only for a moment. Then it sheepishly backs off until I can't hear it anymore. I finally decide to stand up. After I do that, I hear another strange sound. It's coming from right above me now. The ceiling moves upwards, squeaking. Small debris is falling on my head. I squint a little, then raise my hand, trying to touch the ceiling, but it suddenly starts to rise quicker and instantly disappears into the darkness. I'm not in a casket anymore. Well, it wasn't exactly a casket now. It was a well in the form of a casket. The room becomes darker and colder, I'll have to do something at this point, at some point. Hours pass. 
I frantically run from one wall to another, delirious. The walls run away from me, making the already spacious room even bigger. In the end, I stand amidst endless darkness, and only the door is watching me with its eye. I kept purposefully avoiding it. I could sometimes hear horrifying rustles and howls on the outside. However, now I don't even have a choice anymore. I slowly come up to the door and reach out toward it. As expected, the door also moves away from me. I continue moving forward with my hand stretched out. I don't want to lose the only source of light in this pitch black darkness. At some point, I get tired of sneaking up on the door like it's some wild animal, so I lunge at it, trying to grab the handle. However, at the last moment, the door whizzes away, and I fall to the cold floor, unable to keep my balance. It hurts. Stupid door. Stupid, nasty, cursed door. I hate you. I hate you. I scream at the top of my lungs. I finally let out all the despair that I had bottled up. I slowly realize how horrible the situation I ended up in is. No, 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 no! I don't stop screaming for a moment because I'm uh, scared to end up in complete silence. If the reality around me disappears, my twisted imagination will take over. And the realest thing I have right now is my voice. Hey, I can hear you. A voice coming from the other side of the door. I'm here, come closer. I scream thrice as hard as before. I scream until my throat hurts, until my ears start buzzing. My biggest wish right now is to keep in touch with that person, whoever they are. Hey, where are you? I rush toward the door, stumbling on the way. I keep running for a minute, for ten minutes, but the door isn't even an inch closer. At the same time, the distance between us haven't grown either, which means I, ma I match it in speed. I just need to make one final push. I gather the last bit of strength I have and push my legs off the ground. The jump feels like an eternity. I stretch out my hand, almost touching the scratchy wood. I dive face first onto the ground with ridiculous speed. I slide at least 30 more feet like that, uh, like that thanks to inertia, leaving behind a bloody trail. My hand is still outstretched, trying to grab empty space. Ah! Tears stream down my face, making the numerous scratches burn. I try to wipe them, but I scream and yank my hand away the moment I touch my face. My lips and nose are now a mushy mess. Somebody help. The other side of the door is completely silent. The silence reigns for an excruciatingly long time. However, at some point, that silent torture ends. Hey, I can see you. I try to reply, but stifled whimpers come out of my throat instead of words. Are you hurt? Yes, yes. I stand up from my knees despite continuing to cry. I take a couple of deep breaths and start running again. I keep running for hours. I feel like the door is closer to me by an inch or two now. I almost let myself stop for rest at that thought. I can't rest. I'll catch up to it sooner or later. The voice from the other side of the door keeps asking me how I feel. I let out heavy, ragged breaths in reply. I'll fall from exhaustion if I utter even a single word. Still, I'm thankful to them and don't want them to become silent. After another hour passes, I barely scratch the handle with my nails. I'm almost there. I'm so scared, why aren't you doing anything? I arg. Why are they doing this to me? Don't they understand how painful this is to me? Almost there. You're scaring me, go away. Rage fills my brain. I ignore the pain in my bones and channel all my strength into one final jump. No, go away! I firmly grasp the handle and open the door. Blinding light hits my eyes. 
I lose the ground beneath my feet and start falling. I'm lying face down in grass. I smell water, earth, and the dampness of the night. And grass, of course. The wind tickles the back of my head. It howls and jumps around restlessly. Lying down like this is unpleasant and rude when nature is so alive around me with sounds and, I'm pretty sure, colors, too. I stand up, full of anticipation. I see an endless field, a clear sky without a single star, and a pale moon somewhere very, very far away. I shake my head and try to focus my eyes on anything, but to no avail. My surroundings are just too vast. I feel dizzy. <clears throat> Bam. I'm lying in the thick, wet grass again. But this time, I'm looking at the darkness of a night sky instead of just darkness. Is there any real difference, though? The wind howls. It's clearly upset. But what can I do about it? I hear an indiscernible echo coming from far away. A wolf or someone else. Does it even matter? I'm in the grass. Nobody can see me. Ooh. The echo draws closer and closer. At some point, I realize that it's not a wolf. I jump up and start turning my head in a panic. Where is that sound coming from? I haven't said that out loud, but got an instant reply. Ooh. Hey, I can hear you. My voice runs across the field, mixing with the rustle of the grass and the howls of the wind. It feels like it's about to get absorbed by them, but... Ooh. Hey, where are you? Ooh. I can't understand where I should run to, and if I should run at all. Somebody clearly wants me to find and help them. Maybe they're hurt. The grass tickles my heels while I drag my feet in the direction where I think the sound is coming from. <clears throat> it's just, there's not a single tree or stone around, only an endless wide field. I hear a resounding painful scream. I shut my eyes and cover my ears. I suddenly feel scared. The screams turn into a cry. I carefully raise my head, still scared to death. Somewhere very far away, among the thick grass, I spot a silhouette. Just a small black spot, but... Hey, I can see you! The silhouette doesn't move, but the sound is definitely coming from its direction. No, it's not a wee- it's not a scream. More like a whisper or a wheeze. Ooh! Are you hurt? No reaction again. Just muffled sounds. Maybe it's the wind going mad. And the black spot is just a stone or a tree. Or maybe it's her. I walk away, disappointed. 100 steps, 200 steps. Then I turn around. Surprisingly, the spot hasn't become smaller. I start jogging. The grass is no longer tickl tickling me. Hmm. It's whipping my ankles, leaving cuts. Feeling of panic, uh, feelings of panic and unexplainable dread grow inside me. A stone, a tree, why the hell is this field endless? I don't turn around anymore. I know that it's chasing me. The sounds reaching my ears become even stranger, louder, and more distinct. The wind is bullying me too, huh? Isn't that right? That's the case, right? Finally, I stop. I ran out of breath. I'm at the brink of dying. At least I think so. Ooh. The horrifying voice is coming right from behind me. I turn around instinctively and, for some reason, try to shield my face, but end up losing my balance and falling to the ground. The grass replies with a nasty, cackling rustle. Ooh. I've had enough. I spring up. 
The silhouette is still there, at the same distance as before. It's standing there, without moving an inch. I'm scared here, you know. Why won't you do anything? The silhouette trembles, and then starts slowly gliding toward me, followed by new sounds. Wheezes, moans. Fear shackles me. I can only stand and watch the approaching black spot. My lips are parched. I speak in a voice I don't recognize. You're scaring me. Go away. These are all the things that she heard when she was running toward the door. After that, the spot expands rapidly, and in the blink of an eye, most of the sky in the field is consumed by the sticky, cold darkness. Paralysis finally lets my body go, and I immediately sprint away. Ooh! I run so fast that the grass turns into a dark green mush under my feet. I slip up, fall, run again. Ooh! Ooh! No, 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 no! More ooing. A lot of ooing. Jeez, that's a lot of ooing. No, go away. An unknown force turns my head with a crunching sound, and the darkness consumes everything. I wake up on the cold floor, in the center of a cramped room. I look around without standing up. There's no furniture, just naked walls. The Void. That's ending number two. Can I... It does not appear that there is a way to skip... Which really makes me wish that they had uh, sped up the credits. But at least the credits are pretty short. Gives me a chance to look up the, um, the next one. Okay, the I Look Down ending. Okay, skip both death sequences. And help them go to bed without any distractions. And we can only find three or four flyer fireflies for this one. Okay. So this should be pretty straightforward. So skip the death sequences. Go to bed without any distractions. And only three fireflies. Okay. Forget about them and go to bed. What were you thinking? <clears throat> Say nothing. No idea where to look. Don't have to tell me. Alright. Uh, do what you want. Hey, look down. Wowie. Alright. 
right, so we got this is the first one. So basically, as soon as we have the option to move on, we need to do so. All right, so we need three. This is the first one. Hey, Nanani. Um, we are playing uh, Milk Outside a Bag of Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, which is the sequel to Milk Inside a Bag of Milk Inside a Bag of Milk. Um, it's kind of going through the mind of a, uh, a girl who has some sort of neurological disorder um, after witnessing her dad's suicide, her dad's very violent suicide. Um, and uh, so she, uh, the first one was about her trying to purchase milk. This one is her trying to get to bed. Um, as far as comms go, uh, I guess we'll see. <laughs> It'll depend on when I have an idea for another picture that would be good in your style. No worries. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're just going through the, uh, the alternate endings, um, in this, uh, at the moment. Um, we've gone through two of them, and we're on to the, we're gonna try and do the third one now. Okay. So we got that. Need the next firefly. Uh, we'll die anyway. Sleeping bag, we don't need to. We don't actually need this one. Good. Okay, so that's one, two. We need one more. Uh, let's get the sketchbook. We've already done all this dialogue, so we're just going to skip through it all to get to the ending. Is the mic a little low? That's odd. It's showing, uh, that... OBS is showing that it's pretty high. Um, I guess I can turn it up a little bit. I just don't want it to start peaking is the thing. Because I'm already getting pretty close. That's odd. Um, okay, how about now? Is that better? Uh, how's this? Okay. All right. Alright, so we're gonna finish searching. No worries. Always glad to have audio feedback because I can't hear what you guys hear. Um, I can only hear the, the game audio. Um, so I can't tell whether anything is too loud or too quiet for you guys. Uh, unless you guys tell me. Okay. Fresh air. Therapy. Here. Uh, no, actually, I'm towards the end of it. Um, I've already played through the first two endings, and uh, we're uh, we're doing the last few endings of it. Um, yeah, I started about almost three hours ago. Um, so, uh, we've been going for a little while. We're getting uh, closer to the end of the stream, unfortunately. Um... Alright, so she wants a bedtime story. Alright, so this will be ending number three. Uh, essentially, the different endings are different dreams that she has. Uh, depending on what you do during the ending events. So there are a total of five endings, and this is the third one. 
Okay. I wake up and immediately almost lose consciousness from horror. A thin metal stairway snakes around a giant column, disappearing into the darkness. I press myself into the cold wall and pray that I freeze into it. This feeling. I know I've spent a couple of hours or days here, but I don't know how high the column is. I don't know whether I'm going up or down. A billion pounds of concrete and a million miles of emptiness. It's impossible to stay sane when you're near cosmic numbers like that, looking at them, touching them. Even thinking of them makes me feel unimaginable horror. It was just a matter of time before my short term here will end. My mind will melt and my body will turn to dust. The wall's coarse surface scratches at my face. Um, the steps under my feet hum from the wind, eager to escape the concrete's clutches and dive into the abyss along with me. But I'll stay here. I'll stay here without going anywhere. I won't even open my mouth. My every word will be swallowed up by the abyss. I won't take a single step. Why would I? To find out where the stairway abruptly ends? It's all meaningless. Many units of time pass, but I'm still unmoving. My whole body is trembling, but then I realize it's the whole space around me that's trembling. It can't wait to destroy me. Maybe I should gather my will and at least turn my head. That thought doesn't stay in my head for long. It's torn out with inhuman force. Unaware of what's about to happen, I slowly turn my whole body with a squeak. No, this is not what I wanted. Don't! Amongst the silence sings a lonely colossus, unmoving. Until the music stops, the bridge across the dark abyss cannot be seen. Oppressive, thick, sticky air drives itself into my ears, silencing my thoughts with a haphazard string of words while I watch the scene before me unfold. Hundreds of giant concrete structures, just like mine, spread in tidy roads endlessly in all directions. Stairways wrap around them like vines. There, at the end of this world, there's a person smiling. This world still exists, but all that makes it both exists and not. I try to erect a mind block, but to no avail. My brain is already at the mercy of the super creature. A moment passes, and I realize that my body doesn't belong to me either anymore. My legs start moving on their own. The only thing I can do is choose the direction. Up, down, or... The crowd notices blood on Wazik's hands. He runs away, Mendel appears. He has nothing human about him, apart from his excessive grace and hidden elegance. He walks out to the center of the stage. First act begins. Foreign thoughts become even more incoherent. There's less and less space for my own. Do you feel the connection to your body clearly, or does it still cause confusion and fear? You've been living through that fear a lot recently. How did it manifest exactly? Answer honestly, don't hide anything. I decided to descend. Descend. She chose down. You can have a sneaking suspicion that something is wrong, because your path has changed. Maybe you started talking in a wrong way, 
or made some sort of mistake? If so, start getting used to your new life. Try creating imagery that would instill the feeling of every, uh, ever, that everything is as it should be. And with time, you will create a new order inside you. I don't doubt that you're going through some hard times, but you have to make sacrifices, grow up. Only then you'll be able to obtain the meaning of life. Do you get it? Try that if you find it important. Every passing day is a precious gift. If you share a piece of that gift with the world even once, it'll seem like a speck of dust. Do you get it? No, I'm sorry. I won't get that then. Do you get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? Yes, even you get it. When you notice how people look at themselves in the mirror, when you look at your own reflection and realize that it exists in reality, do you understand how exactly it exists? She wakes. Okay, so I guess this end part is the same um, for all the endings. After the dream. Okay, so let's see. What do I need to do for the fourth ending? The everything is fine ending. Okay. So skip both death scenes and collect all six of the fireflies. Okay. So I guess the reason I didn't get this the first time is because I triggered the first death scene. Alright, so we're just going to need to uh, <laughs> wait a second uh, to get through the credits here. Because for some reason they didn't give us the option to uh, to skip them after we've seen them the first time, which kind of makes me wish that they put the uh, the individual credits a little closer together. Good time to take a drink, though. And unfortunately, the credits aren't very long. Alright, yeah, looks like we're just about done. Alright, so skip both deaths, but get all of the fireflies. Doesn't matter what I say. All right. So now we just need to quickly skip through uh, gathering the fireflies. Which we know where they all are now. And the only thing we have to make sure we don't do is uh, the second death scene. Because we've already skipped the first one now. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, so we got the one, the number two. Alright, so... Three. Okay, so that's three. Uh, the bag has another one. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Alright, so we got the one, the two. We still can't click on that. Um, three, four. There's got to be one more. Where was the... Oh, the sketchbook, right. I really wish they had a skip option here as well. But we're done now. We skipped both deaths, and we got all the fireflies. Yep, we found all the fireflies. Oh, fuck! Oh, fuck me. I just clicked on the second death scene. It's this, um... Secret has been hidden. Between the fan and the radio. Oh. Well, I just completely fucked up the run. Oh, I can't go back. No, I don't want to save, because that'll fuck it up completely. Um, shit. Is there no way to restart? Go to menu? I have to restart the game. Alright, just give me a sec. I can't believe I did that. I was not paying attention. Fortunately, it only takes like a minute to get through to the, uh... Yeah. Come on, show up. There we go. Yes, yes. Because the save menu is literally only save. There's no return to menu or anything. Continue. There we go. Alright. So, doesn't matter. Let's see how fast we can get through all this. Reason why it's childish. I know. Playful. Too bad. All right. So got the first one down let's look for the others now i did just check what so the to get the to get the last ending we have to get all six um yes and skip both death scenes okay so we have to skip both death scenes uh for and get all six for either of them so after we get all six then we're gonna save it um then we're gonna get the secret item and, um, and then we can just speed through both endings without having to go through all of this again. Pills. Whoops. Click on something I didn't need to. That's fine. Alright, uh, so that's three, four, alright, the last one is in the bag. Although, wait, did I look at this? I don't look... I can't remember if I looked at the sketchbook. Fortunately, once we click on and through an item, um, it does turn it off. 
so okay yes yeah, so we did it so we did the one two three four and five all right so we got them all so let's save here save game and now as long as we don't hit that second death scene okay don't think too much Fresh air, balcony. Stay here. There we go. Alright, that was the last thing that we needed to not do. So now we should get uh, the fifth ending. Or the fourth ending, not the fifth one. Do it right? Yes, we get the everything is fine ending. Ugh, another terrible morning. Boo, why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the others at school will think. Well, it's not that I care too much. I just don't want to be branded a loser on my first day. Cheer up, there's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you, after all. Hey, hurry up. Yes, Mom. Oh. Ugh, another terrible morning. Boo, why is my face always so stupid? I wonder what the others at school will think. Well, it's not that I care too much, I just don't want to be branded a loser on my first day. Cheer up, there's nothing wrong with looking different. That's not what defines you, after all. Hey, hurry up. Yes, Mom. Oh, okay. Another terrible morning. Yeah, same dialogue. Oh. Okay. Another terrible morning. Why is my face always so stupid? Cheer up, nothing wrong with looking different. Alright, bad hair day, we can work with that. Ugh, another terrible morning. Boo, why is my face always so stupid? Nothing wrong with looking different. Hurry up. Oh. That's new. Another terrible morning. Yes, face is stupid. Don't care too much. Oh, all right. Uh, I hate that one. Oh, okay. Um, I hate this one less than the, uh, super long eyes. Alright, yeah, I, I had a feel. Honestly, I had a feeling that this one was coming. Another terrible morning. Your face is still stupid even if you don't have one. Is there just gonna be one where she's not there at all? Oh, at least she has her head back. Good morning. I feel wonderful today. Can't wait for my first day at school. Hey, hurry up. Yes, Mom. Well, the dialogue changed there when she no longer had a face. Oh. Okay. So the uh, 1987 Ninja Turtles uh, shot. With them uh, filming the back of their head even though the camera was strapped to the front of their head. All right. So, 
for the sake of speeding this up, I'm just going to exit the game so that we don't have to go through the credits again. And because I already know what I have to do for uh, for this last ending. If it's going to come up. There we go. Yep, yep. Still faster than sitting through the credits. Continue. All right, so we've gotten all of them. Now we need to just get get the special item, which is, let's see, a tiny scrap of paper between the fan and the lower right radio. This one. What's this? Okay. Finish searching. Now I just need to make sure not to hit that uh, choice that causes the second uh, death scene. Thank me. Stay here. There we go. All right, that's it. We're good now. Now we can just skip through to the last ending. Okay, here it is. The final elde ending, the Are We Friends ending. Hello, thank you for choosing our pizzeria. You know, this place is so empty, though I don't feel particularly good or bad because of it. I'm all alone, but at the same time, it feels like I'm not. There's a lot of thoughts in my head. They always keep me entertained. I can create a whole world within them. I'm sure it'll be able to fill the void around me if I try hard enough. Although, no matter how much I think, my surroundings don't change. Yes, things happened in my head, but they never left its premises. And it's not like I tried to suppress them. Maybe they were afraid to come out. What kind of pizza would you like to order? Anyway, there's so much space in my head that could be put to good use. So every thought would make a senseless and merciless circle in my head, destined to go back to where it started. <clears throat> but there should be an end somewhere. You can't wander around forever. What do you think? I know, it's, I know it sounds scary, but it's not scarier than constantly existing among the void. This place is safe, and nothing bad will happen here. Nothing good will happen either, though. Please note that we have a special offer right now. Three pizzas for the price of two. Awesome! Now, it does depend on how expensive their pizzas are, but, uh... That could be good. Yeah, there's probably nothing good in having the same thoughts over and over. What's the point of having them anyway? I could have escaped from here, but I feel like my thoughts aren't helping me at all. They should be ashamed. Probably. It's nobody's fault that I can't even see a door here. I would have had it easier with one. I tried to find it. It turned out to be a waste of time. No matter where I look, it's not looking good, pun not intended, and that strips me of the last bit of hope for salvation. We also have a discount program for new customers. You can learn more about it on your account page. Don't you think that me being here is also a waste of time? What's the point in that? I can just keep on thinking. And even then, my thoughts are as meaningless and empty as everything else. Does it mean that I'm not filling the void, but I'm a part of it? 
then why should I feel anything? Why should I know that I exist? Although, I'm not even sure about that. This place is always neither warm nor cold. It's neutral. But at the same time, if I think about warmth, I feel warm. Maybe this world corresponds to my thoughts. I wouldn't want to admit that I'm completely empty. I'm not the reason everything had disappeared, right? Can't I just adapt and get used to having nothing around me since I can't do anything about it? Are you ready to make your order? Yes, that's right. I shouldn't care. It's empty here, and it makes me feel neither good nor bad. I'm all alone, but at the same time, it feels like I'm not. There are a lot of thoughts in my head. They always keep me entertained. I can create a whole world with them. This place is safe, and nothing bad will happen here. Nothing good will happen either, though. Me being here is a waste of time. I don't feel the void. I'm a part of it. This strips me of the last bit of hope for salvation. I shouldn't care. It's empty here, and it makes me feel neither good nor bad. It's nobody's fault that I can't even see a door here. What's the point in having one? I feel like nobody is helping me. They should feel ashamed. I wouldn't want to admit it, but I'm all alone here. I can't do anything about it. Please note that we have a special offer right now. Four pizzas for the price of two. Okay, now that's a good deal. I don't care that this place is empty, you hear? I feel neither good nor bad. I'm all alone. With my pizzas. My head is full of thoughts. They eclipse the world around me. This space is pretty cramped, but at least it's safe. Even though I'll never even though I'll never feel good here. Does that mean existing is a waste of time? I need to decide, and my thoughts will help me. They'll lead me to the exit, and I'll be able to feel proud of myself. I'll be able to save myself. At the same time, I don't really care anymore. This place is empty, but it makes me feel neither good nor bad. I'm alone, but my head is full of thoughts. A whole world, one might say. If I try hard enough, I'll be, it'll be able to fill all the void around me. Still, no matter how much I keep thinking, my surroundings don't change. Yes, something happens outside of my head, but... What was it? There's not enough space for my thoughts. It's already filled with something else. Even if there's nothing around me, I'm still here. And my head is full of thoughts. If I try hard enough, So the world isn't empty after all. I can't see anything. Session timeout. Please reload the page. Hmm. And that is the final ending of, uh, um, 
a bag of, of milk outside a bag of milk outside a bag of milk. I think that I liked the, um, the third ending, the one with the staircases, the best. I, think, I thought that was really interesting. Uh, well, really, they were all interesting, but uh, I, I think that was the one that I liked the most. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was an interesting game. Um, I still wish that there was some sort of interaction that we could have had with the the box of, uh, the, the pile of milk boxes that was underneath the, uh, the sink there, uh, in the, uh, in her room, um, instead of it just, uh, having that glitchy effect on it, um, because it, it would have been nice to get kind of more information as to what exactly was going on there with the milk, um, like, it, how it corresponds with that, uh, really creepy intro cutscene thing that we had. Um, with her being yelled at for drinking milk. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would have, I would have liked to have had a little more information on what exactly was going on with that part. Um, but, uh, I think it was a very interesting little game. Um, I picked it up on sale, so I didn't pay the full price, but, um, I, I think that, uh, if you can get it on sale, then it's definitely, uh, well worth the, uh, the few bucks uh, for it. Um, I'm not sure what its full price is. Let's see. Okay, so its full price is about 10 bucks Canadian, which I think might be a little steep, uh, for the actual amount of gameplay that we got, um, in it. Um, but, uh, but hey, for a few bucks, I think that it's well worth the experience. It is on sale for 75% off right now, um, so it's only a couple bucks. Uh, so if you do want to check it out and play around with it yourself, um, you can uh, do so on Steam there. Uh, but uh, yeah, what the heck do I actually have scheduled for the rest of this week? Uh, it's been a hot minute since I checked. Okay, yes, here we go, okay. Um, yeah, so... Um, tomorrow we are going to be playing Antichamber, which is, uh, kind of an interesting looking 3D puzzle game. Um, we saw how the last puzzle game went with And Yet It Moves, so hopefully, uh, things won't be quite so frustrating in Antichamber. Um, but, uh, we're, yeah, we're gonna give it a shot. Um, I think I read that the full game is roughly nine hours. Um, so we'll see after tomorrow's stream whether it's something I'm going to continue with. I haven't decided yet. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we got that. Um, Thursday we're going to be playing Botanicula, uh, which is kind of just a fun little point-and-click exploration, um, adventure, uh, where you're these little bugs trying to save your, uh, your little patch of forest from, uh, these invading spider-like creatures. Um, so that looks, uh, really cute and, uh, and should be fun. Uh, then, yeah, per, uh, Friday we're going to get back into Persona 4 Golden. Uh, we'll probably be saving Rees, uh, in this week's episode. Uh, then on Sunday we'll continue with Fae Tactics, as we have been doing. Um, so that's the plan for the rest of the week. Um, if you haven't joined my Discord yet, the link is down below the stream. Uh, I post the weekly schedules there, as well as the, uh, um, stream announcements, uh, you can also suggest any games that you would like to see me play. Um, I am very much open to suggestions, especially if they're ones that are already on my Steam list. Um, but, uh, yeah. Other than that, um, I hope that you've enjoyed the stream and, uh, this unusual game. And, uh, I hopefully will see you guys here tomorrow, and I hope that you have a very good rest. Uh, see you all later.